Good evening, everyone, and happy holidays. I'm Ryan Williams with the DC Public Library. Today's special program is in celebration of the newly opened Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial Library on 9th and G Streets Northwest. After a three year, $211 million remodernization, MLK Library reopened in September as a center for learning in the district, a meeting place for authors, artists, and activists, and as the archive for the rich history of our nation's capital. While current conditions prevent us from meeting in person, the library remains a resource for residents throughout the district and a place for great conversation online. Tonight is one great example. Look, it's clear, 2020 has been a tough year with a handful of highlights as we all stay safe at home. One of those highlights happened a few weeks ago with the debut of Jingle Jangle, A Christmas Journey on Netflix. If you're one of the few who hasn't seen the adventures of Jeronicus Jangle and his granddaughter Journey, here's just a taste of what you're missing. Once upon a time lived the greatest inventor that ever there was. Jeronicus Jangle. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas indeed! Jangle, for the last 30 years, you've been promising something sensational. I need more time. Either come up with the money you've borrowed by Christmas, or show me the revolutionary invention you once promised. I would lose everything. What's wrong, Grandpa? I had a perfect life. Loving family in a magical shop till an old friend took it all. But he didn't get this. Young lady. If I know anything about your grandfather, there's something sensational in that. Wow. I'm Buddy. Whoa. <laughs> I'm actually flying. If I have that toy, I'll be unstoppable. It's foolproof. You are proof that there are fools. Fools, 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 fools. This is the only place I've ever been where I finally felt like I belong. We have to get Buddy back. I know about losing things, but the magic's in what you still have. you do the magic lives inside of you Absolutely thrilled to have with us the dynamic duo behind Jingle Jangle, A Christmas Journey, writer, director, producer, David E. Talbert, and producer, Lynn Sassoon Talbert. DC, if you, those two names are familiar it's because they are family. No doubt you've seen their work here in DC theaters for nearly 20 years with Shadow of a Man, Love in the Nick of Time, and an, or Another Man Will, or you've seen their films like Baggage Claim and Almost Christmas, David, Lynn, Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, good to be here, good to be here. Thank you for having us. First, I want to say congratulations. I watched Jingle Jangle over the Thanksgiving holiday and you all tapped into what makes a holiday film a classic. Um, describe for us um, this journey of Geronicus and, uh, and family for those who have not seen it yet and, and look forward to checking it out over the holidays. It's a story of Jeronicus Jangle, who is uh, the greatest inventor in all the land. Uh, I created this town, a uh, magical town called Cobbleton. And he's a toy maker, he's an inventor, he's an alchemist. He is the most cheerful man of all. And, um, and then one of his inventions, uh, his, his apprentice betrays him. 
and steals one of his most prized inventions. So he spirals out of control and kind of forgets of the magic that he's had, that he has. And then his, meanwhile, his granddaughter on the other side of town begs her mother, can I please go see my grandfather? She comes in there and she starts to remind him of the magic he has, but also the magic she has. David, as I understand, you've had King and Jango in mind going back to the mid nineties. Um, where were you at that point? Take us back to 97, 98 and what you were doing when this story was developed. Yeah, Lynn and I had just gotten married. And uh, so I was just, you know, feeling in a wonderful space and, and wanted to revisit some of the things that I, my childhood that I loved, that she loved, uh, the stories, the kind of whimsical, magical stories that we all grew up um, watching. And so I said I was going to do it as a Broadway musical. And for years, we kept trying to figure out what to do with the music and how to get it set up. And then, then when our son was born, um, I realized that it really wasn't the music that was holding me up. I needed to see uh, life through the eyes of a child. And so he just started just my his, his imagination caused mine to start bursting. And I was a kid again. Lynn will tell you that I've been a kid since we met. And she's now raising two two kids. Uh, <laughs> me. But but I started to see the world through the eyes of a child and I became a child again. And then that's when we said it's probably best to do it as a film. And, and we went into Netflix and uh, and they believed in our vision and uh, it helped us bring it to life. That's great. And, yeah, and it was also, I mean, just really important us growing up with the, the movies that we love. David's favorite is Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Uh, mine is Mary Poppins and Annie. And we just realized too that there were never any classic tales that featured people of color. And that was a huge motivation as well because, you know, David tried to show our son Chitty Chitty Bang Bang and he couldn't connect to it really. Um, you know, he has Miles Morales on his wall and Black Panther. And so, you know, David instantly realized then now it's even more important because we want this to show how the world really is. And we want to highlight, you know, people of color that they're magical too, and children are magical too, and they can see themselves in this world mm -hmm. and not have to imagine being someone else. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 that was important, you know, um, growing up in DC and in, in a, a holiness church, we put on Christmas plays every single year, Christmas story. But they're the same story. You're going to be a Christmas tree, and you're going to be three Joseph. wise men, and you, Joseph, and you, Mary. I don't want to be Joseph again. Boy, shut up, and you're going to sit down, and you're going to be nobody this year. You want to be you know, you're triggering someone right now. Who has got right, right, right. And then everybody forgot all the lines, and then somebody, church mother, like, that's all right, baby. That's Let right. the Lord do it. Right. You'll be all right. <laughs> so, but. We, we love those stories of, of, of the Bible stories, but there are also other stories that need to heighten and awaken the imagination uh, of a child. And so I, I said it was very important. Lynn said the same thing. It was very important to share this with the world. That's right. What's been the biggest adjustment for you both um, as you have moved between um, the world of theater and you and you highlight it, you know, initially thinking that this would would, would be a, a great musical. There are many of us who watch it who think so it'll still be a great musical. And oh, yeah. sure. <laughs> What's been that big transition, um, that adjustment between um, uh, the theater to motion pictures that you've had over these past years and including up with Jingle Jangle? It's such a big canvas. You know, and I love theater and I'll always be a playwright and theater director at heart. And you see that a lot in in the bones of the DNA of, of Jingle Jangle, A Christmas Journey. But it's such a big canvas to paint on. So you have to look at, well, we don't have to go from city to city or show to show to reach a thousand people. When we pressed a button on November 13th, when it debuted, it debuted in 192 countries around the world. 
um, in, in 35 different languages. So one of the biggest things is to really expand your mind that, you know, we love talking to DC and Philly and Chicago and Detroit and Atlanta and LA and all the inner cities. But one of the big things is that there's a big world out there that we're talking to that wants to eat from what we put on our table, our artistic table too. And so it was just kind of expanding your mind. Um, and my wife did that when we went for our 20th anniversary to London and for my 50th birthday, she took me to Paris. So I'd never gone out of the country. The big trip for me was we were going with the church up to uh, Redden, Pennsylvania, to the uh, to the to the, <laughs> the outlets, to the outlet. Yeah, we get to go to outlets. We're going somewhere. That's right. We're going somewhere. <laughs> but and, and and as you you know, and again as you you know, self-identify as a playwright, and you know, was thinking about. Um, uh, as a, as a library and a library audience in terms of it being a celebration of literacy, a celebration of words, a celebration of being able to be able to uh, find your story and, and capture it, um, whether it is uh, on, on in the theater, whether it's in a, in a film, whether it's in the novels that you've written. Mm -hmm. What is there, is there a common thread before you take pen to paper uh, in the stories that you tell? There, it's, it's, it's humanity and hope. Um, it's growing up in, the, in a church in DC. Uh, my great grandmother, uh, Annie Mae Woods, was a pastor and founder, one of the founding pastors of the Pentecostal uh, movement there in DC. But I watched her and my uncle who went to Howard, um, or Ronald Woods, I watched words, the word of God, people would come in alcoholics or drug dealers and they would, or users, and they would leave out a different way because of words. So I understood the power of words, the power of storytelling, which is our heritage is griots our, from Africa. We're great storytellers. So I, I, I watched as a child, I witnessed how words, how powerful they were and how they could touch people. And I witnessed the humanity and the hope and the heart that was in this church. So my 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 secret sauce is simple. You know, it's it's love, it's humanity, it's it's heart, it's hope. It's these are the things that I these are things that are in my DNA. And so I like to put them in my in my work and some mischief, because I, you know, I'm still a big kid. Some mischief and some laughter and some shenanigans. And you mix all that in the pot and then then that's what you have. That's wonderful. And Lynn, uh, in the work that you've done, do you have you seen a shift in how, especially uh, how African Americans are, are being portrayed? Um, you know, you see a, a fantastic element, so many wonderful elements in Jingle Jangle that you can't help but not see them in the 50, 60 other Christmas films <laughs> that are coming out this 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 year alone. That's um, right. Have you seen that? Have you seen the shift over these past few years? If you, as you all have been working in 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 movie making, mm -hmm. well, the big shift. I I feel that our theater roots is what have prepared us for this because we've been programming and telling stories to our audience for so long and we're intimate with them. We hear what they respond to. We talk to them after the shows. We know what they want to see, what they want. And that has given us perspective. And at the same time, because we've had such a good time going across the country and speaking to this audience, we wanted to highlight, you know, Sorry. highlight them. And we didn't realize how important and how necessary we knew how important and how necessary it was but we didn't realize how it was also as important worldwide and when we were in london that people had seen our plays that lived in london that you know our military families had you know rented our tapes and dvds to watch because they had nothing to connect to like that all over the world and so our big challenge was coming from a place where we controlled it. You know, we knew what to do and we put it on the stage and we gave it everything we 
had. And now we're going to this this other outlet of, you know, executives and studios and trying to tell them that these stories are important and to show faces that look like us, they will be well received and it is much needed. And thank goodness for Netflix, they appreciated that, what the stories we were trying to tell and who we were trying to showcase. And, you know, we've all seen it through the years with even like crazy rich Asians or spe specifically stories about Jewish families or you name it. And that's what we want as well. But also in this fantastic, mm -hmm. you know, uh, a spectacle of a world of fantasy you know we want to fly too that's and right. that's right that's what it is. I, we want our son to see that he can fly and he can be magical and he can see a magical way to, to use stem education at the same time i want you know my girlfriends to see themselves in these fabulous natural hairstyles these gorgeous gowns with laced with African fabrics, you know, um, all of those things, because we just have so much to share and give. And um, it's been it's been very heartwarming and um, to hear the of people all over the world from Africa, from, you know, from Ghana, from from Israel, you know, it, all of these different places where they're just saying thank you, you know, for showing us here in this light and and the afro beats and the snowball scene i mean everyone did like the music we've laced in several different types of music yeah. from afro beats to yeah. minneapolis style you know so right. that's what it's all about we just all want an opportunity to tell our stories that's great and, and i have a follow-up on, on the question on what you just shared there especially um but also considering that I think a few of us are going to be doing a stinking leg the next time we are in a snowball fight. <laughs> we just you know, have that added, added flavor to it. But uh, Lynn, tell me, you mentioned, you mentioned the STEM education portion. And I think that's yeah. so important to be able to come in and, and see um, in this film, you have a black family that has a natural gift yeah. towards science and technology. You have to raise the variable exponentially to the second power. <laughs> the other one. No, that's not possible. Square root of. As if the derivative would be. You understand this? What about this one? That's the circumference of spectacular. And this? This one. The second derivative of sensational. So STEM education was so important to include in this film because I wanted children to see a magical way to solve problems. And that square root of possible, what is their square root of possible? And with this, we feel like we've added the arts into this to make it STEAM education, you know, as we're, as we're you know, experiencing now. And, and we want our kids out there to see that they come from a line of very highly intelligent and educated people of color. Um, one of the characters in the film, Edison, his name is Edison Latimer. And so named after the inventor, also Lewis Latimer, because he wasn't the only one that invented the light bulb. He invented the filament in the light bulb. There'd be no light without the filament, right? So it should be Thomas Edison and Lewis Latimer invented the light bulb. So there are things in there that um, are hidden gems that you'll see, buildings named after firsts, um, showing these magical formulas in the air, all of these things are for the purpose of sharing the history of the people before us that are otherworldly and have these amazing gifts and that it is real, it exists, and you can have that gift too and share it with the world. And now it's also about crediting those who were never credited just because of the color of their skin. 
and David, can you tell us, um, you know, uh, uh, before before the characters come alive, before any of the deals are made, you clearly have a love of words and a love and a gift for for putting together great characters. What do you say to writers who are looking to make their break? Uh, and no doubt they've approached you over the over the years. Uh, what do you? What is the generally one of the first things that you say to them? I would say write what you feel. Um, write write what entertains you. You know, a lot of people say, "Well, uh, you know, I write because Hollywood is looking for this kind of story or looking for that kind of story." But I always only write what entertains me. Is that is that? Remember, you are the audience, and if it moves you then it will move someone else. Um, I often say you can't touch people unless you're first touched. And you can't expect people to be entertained if you're not entertained. So I, I, I'll sit there, I crack up at the scripts and I cry and I get angry. I do all those things because they're in the texture of the, of the pages. So that when I give them to someone else and they read it, they're like, man, that scene, that really, that man, I got emotional. Well, you got emotional because I was emotional when I wrote it. So I would say to everyone is that write what moves you, write what entertains you, write what breaks your heart, what, write what makes you feel warm and fuzzy. And, and, then, and then it will touch somebody else. It will make them feel the same way. Great. Who are, who are the, uh, the writers and, and you know, who, who did young David read? What, what books did young David read often? Young David read Apostle Paul, <laughs> Moses, who wrote the Genesis, the Exodus, the so, so, All my greatest authors were all Moses, King David, uh, Solomon, uh, Ecclesiastes, the Psalms. So all of my favorites. You, you know, it's it just growing up in the church. All I knew were the books of the Bible. And, and Matthew and Mark and Luke and John and that's all I knew. You know? yeah, but what I did understand is the poetry that was in the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Woo! Uh, you know, uh, faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I mean, in, in Ecclesiastes and 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 it's just the beauty of of the poetry of the rhythm and 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 so that really always pulled me into that but those were those were my heroes <laughs> uh, but when i got older it became the first book i remember outside of the bible was uh seize the time by bobby seal and i and i really got into the black panthers that's a, a long distance to travel from <laughs> Ecclesiastes to the Black Panther movement, but that spoke to me. And then as I became an adult, um, I gravitated towards Neil Simon as a writer. And I loved his stories as a theater, stories on stage and in his films and in TV and the sitcoms. And then um, as a playwright, it's August Wilson. And the first play I remember going to see was in San Francisco, and it was um, it was a piano lesson. And I'm like, well, what manner of I'm, I'm flipping through the play bill. I'm like, well, wait a second. And I, when I got a chance to meet uh, August, and we sat there and we talked for a minute. We were at Bernard's house, remember? And I'm like, it felt like you know, I just shook his hand. I said, damn, I'm about. I'm about at least 20 times better writer just by shaking this man. <laughs> you, know, you know, but but the brilliance of, of August Wilson, the brilliance of Neil Simon, and the brilliance of Moses, of uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, <laughs> yes. and, and Apostle Paul, uh, King David, and Solomon moved me. Great. And, and thank you for that. And, and from <laughs> one preacher's kid to another you know, we, you know if you want to know if you ever want to know wonderful old english before you can understand shakespeare read a read an old bible that be would be this now yes, that's right yeah, all of it all right, right. You say the shout is the shout 
and thou is be if you say you and them and the those uh 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 boy come on down here it's the is thou is thou right. <laughs> that's right and then go do chic Shakespeare next and you're and you're you're smooth right. you're right on there you get it no, I love it. Lynn, you have been uh, recognized by NWCP for excellence in costume design in your past productions. Uh, you noted just a, a few minutes ago in terms of some of the detail. I love for the audience that has that has noticed the detail and those who may have missed something and may want to go back, share a few nuggets of, of some of the detail that's gone into what also makes this a great film. And from a costume design, the hair especially, um, in, in other, other ways. Yes, okay. Well, I'm wearing my journey today. This is my hairstyle um, that I loved uh, for Madeline Mills, um, who played Journey in the film. Um, again, wanting to highlight uh, beautiful, textured, natural hairstyles, um, wanting to normalize it because you know many of us have been through our hair journeys and. Uh, had to deal with things, be it in corporate America, be it at schools. Um, and I wanted to showcase and show that these are cultural, um, these are things that are cultural and are beautiful and should be uh, warmly accepted, just like other things. And the fabrics that I um, laced with our amazing uh, costume designer, Michael Wilkinson, our amazing team in general, the department head, Sharon Martin, our um, production designer, Gavin Bouquet, all of them were very open to the specificity that we wanted to add to this film. And it made it so much more fun and, and so much more well-rounded um, because all of you, you know, you notice it and, and you feel it, so you feel the, the blood, sweat, and tears, first of all, but the heart that we put into it, you know? And so all, all of these things, when we put in the African fabrics in the wardrobe, it was because, I mean, we're set in the 1800s. You're only one or two generations from where you came from. So any of those rituals or, or um, cultural aspects from your parents or your grandparents, you would know. You know, the hair, how it's braided, maybe the rice was put in the hair or the jewelry. All of those things are things that we got from Africa, from our ancestors. And I wanted to include that and highlight that. So um, David did such an amazing thing by even naming the characters. Um, like I said, Adam is in Latimer, but in my family, my name's Lynn, my brother's name is Lon, my sister's name is Lori, and my father's name is Lonnie. And so the whole alliteration, which I think happens a lot in Black families, it's like you're all L's, you're all, you know, so he, Geronicus, Jessica, Journey, Joanne. So it's all of these little things that um, speak to us so personally, but create such a, just a warm, family feeling you know you feel like you've been here all along and if you would have been in the 1800s this is where you would want to be this is how you would dress this is what you would say how you would look and that's how i wanted it to be i didn't want it to feel so foreign you know we wanted it to feel like it was there all along so um, those are some of the things a lot of the buildings are named after first. There's Tharp Music, which was named after Sister Rosetta Tharp, who's known as the rock and roll, you know, the queen of rock and roll. And um, David's great grandmother, who he mentioned, there's A.M. Woods Sweets after Annie Mae Woods, his great grandmother. She made the best sweet potato pie yes. on yes. the planet. So yes. I wanted to honor her. Yes, and there's my father, Dr. Lonnie Sisson, right next to Jangles and Things, there's Sisson Arms. And he was the first black optometrist to be licensed in the state of Nevada. So that was very historic as well, a way for me to honor him um, from his passing as there's well. There's North, North Star, North Star. Um, is one of the names of the building. Mm -hmm. um, of course, uh, North Star Press, Frederick Douglass. Yeah. Um, and um, you know, there's J. Lewis Law after uh, John Lewis. Uh, late John. John Lewis. We put name him up on the building, so we wanted our ancestors to be smiling down on us, 
and and being the wind that 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 carried these dreams, helped them take flight. And that that was important, you know, for us to honor those. And also it's to think we want them to see it in research and learn about these people as well and learn about the history. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of been a fun Easter egg. There's another Easter egg in the trunk where Geronicus opens up and Buddy's heart is inside of there. On the trunk, there's a sticker that says Wakanda. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Wakanda. Yeah. I wanted people to know that Geronicus Jangle, this great inventor, this alchemist, this innovator, he traveled all around the world to get to where, and even places that normal, regular people couldn't travel. He went to Wakanda, so maybe Buddy's part of vibranium, you know. Right, yeah. right, right. <laughs> but I wanted to honor, I wanted to honor that, that, uh, yeah. with, with, with that. Those are great. I've seen it three times, and now I want to go back because I missed the John Lewis part. I saw the Wakanda part. I've seen it. That, that, I love those. That you, you now, I definitely have to go back and watch um, for those uh, those parts. Uh, Lynn, uh, I want I want to take the conversation in a different direction, especially from a perspective of uh, uh, the fact that this is a Netflix uh, feature film. I mean. It, it, to see the the great promotion around it, to see the investment that Netflix has clearly made when you look at the talent that you all have, have chosen to put together in terms of from the costumes, from the, the design, the cinematography, all of it that, that's come together in the midst of it. Um, tell us what happens at the negotiation table uh, when a major studio like Netflix uh, calls you up, invests in you, um, what is what what happens in in, uh, in a moment like that? Well, I have to tell you, you know, David, how that whole thing happened quickly is we did a film there called El Camino Christmas with a friend of ours, Ted Melby, who wrote Hidden Figures, and it was a fluke. Mm -hmm. David ran into him in an elevator, and he was like, "What you doing, Melby? What are you doing?" And he's like, "Oh, DT, I'm working on a film." But we just lost our director. And he goes, oh, DT, you're going to direct this movie. It'll be great. I'll send you the script. It'll be great. So next thing you know, he's like, little produce it. You'll direct it. Next thing you know, three weeks later, we're in production for this film. And it was such a wonderful experience that they wanted Dave to come in again and see what else he had in mind. And so David is an amazing storyteller, as you all know. And he said exactly what we were saying in the room to Scott Stuber and Nick Nesbitt about how there are a lack of representation in stories like this and fantasy. And just to be able to sit down with your family during the holidays, you know, there's nothing out there like this. And, you know, it's great to have the remakes, but we'd like some original stories too. You know, it's like we have a lot to tell and everything doesn't have to be the black version of this. So from that perspective, Scott Stuber and Nick Nesbitt said, you know, you're right. I never thought about it like that. And we need to do something about it. And they bought it in the room. So from there on, it took him a few months to write the script. And he sent that in and they said to him, don't write budget." Write your imagination. Wow. When do you hear that? Never. <laughs> Never. Buy one, get one free. No. It was, it was, and they've just been a support from day one. You know, everything we wanted to do, everything we wanted to showcase. And, you know, when David wrote the story, Netflix wasn't even around. Netflix didn't even exist, which is so crazy. And he makes up perfect point where, and, and Geronica says it at the end, he said, if you only waited, I would have given you everything. He said that to Gustafson. And I feel like we waited. And this day as a song, it's like all our lives, we waited for this day, you know, the song that they sing in the beginning. So it, it's been a wild ride. And this was no easy feat, you know, being on set to shoot this, pack up our family, move to London for eight months, 
you know, tackle a film like this with visual effects, choreography, special effects, music, period, you know, but it was the right time. It was the right time. Great. El Camino Christmas led to Jingle Jangle. Yes. What's next? <laughs> What's next? David? I, I'm just, um, you know, I'm going to do this on, on the stage. I'm going to do this on Broadway. I'm going to take Jingle Jangle on Broadway. Um, that's a lifelong dream of mine. Um, but um, for me, it's just um, continuing to push the envelope. You know, I think we're in a renaissance right now of, um, of, of filmmaking uh, from uh, Black uh, artists, auteurs. Um, you know, I think we're in a renaissance because the Black audience is not a monolith and, and we come in all different shapes and sizes and colors. And I think we're getting a chance to paint with use different colors uh, 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 to, to paint on our canvas. And so that's all I'm gonna do, continue to paint, continue to um, expand my mind and other people's minds and open the doors for other people like me, you know, that that's, that's coming behind me. And so it'll be a little bit easier uh, for, for them. Um, so I think as a, as a partnership, and what we do is continuing to do what we love and sharing it with the world and inviting everyone to the table. And it sounds like also it, as a helpful addition to that is being able to have someone on the other side who is looking out for those stories, like as you mentioned, Lynn, that that um, that are original, yes. you know, that are looking for terrific writers like you, David who are coming from a place of heart and a place of family in terms of being able to bring that bring that to the fore as well. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you know, what, what's going on in the world, um, you know, this film was made before the Black Lives Matter movement really took its, its biggest leap forward. It was before all the political shenanigans were going on and, and um, pandemic. And, but you look at the world needs heart, the world needs hope, the world needs healing. The world needs to understand that it's connected uh, through its humanity um, and to break down these color lines. And that's all we want to, you know, that's all we want to do. I think, you know, uh, my great grandmother, when I did my first play, uh, I said, I said, came home and said, Ma, I said, I'm a playwright now. I said, I said, you know, I got my plays. It's like thousands of people coming in. It's the first time I came back to DC right before we opened the Constitution Hall. And I said, Ma, now I'm making money too, Ma. I said, you know, I, I'm doing it. And, 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 uh, and she looked at me and she was smiling and she said, and uh, she let me finish. And she said, you know, David, Mama don't know nothing about the play business. But what I do know is only what you do for God will last. So that's really what it is for me at the end of the day, things that have some heavenly value, things that are putting something out, vibrations, out into the universe, and 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 that's who I am. That's who we are, and and that's what we hope to be able to continue to do. No, thank you both. I, I really appreciate your time. Uh, just in in, in wrapping up, um, if the motion picture wasn't enough, you decided to launch your two books. Um, you know, we're DC Public Library. We love good children's books. Can you tell us about the two books that you that you're bringing out? Yes. So the first one is the square root possible. Um, this book was inspired by the song that Journey Jangle sings in the film called The Square Root of Possible. And this, the reason why I want to do this, because that song just really touched me when it was written by Philip Lawrence. It got me through a lot of moments with making this film. This was my mantra throughout the film, because many a times I needed to find my square root of possible. And I want children to find their square root of possible. So I, I want the Jingle Jangle universe to be expanded in a way that can be classic pieces and especially holiday, just like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer or Grinch or, you know, you name it. And I feel that we need a classic piece that's for everyone. Because if you strip it all away, we all want the same things. The themes are there. Love, hope, forgiveness, fun, you know, um, family. So these are things that I want to keep putting out into the world, David and I both. 
And then to do the middle grade was Jingle Jangle, The Invention of Jeronicus Jangle. It just delves in a little bit more of the story. And for your imagination, um, if this book was picked up 10 years from now, they'd be able to read it and really imagine what this world is. And the movie would be the bonus that they could go to. And I was so fortunate to be able to have the grandmother in the film, Felicia Rashad, read the audio version of this book for me. And I, it was just such a full circle moment. And I was so honored to not only have her in the film, but to be able to do this. And everyone knows Felicia Rashad is all about education. You know, Howard grad and mm -hmm. she um, she That's has the queen. Yeah, she is the queen and she has just been a true gem. I mean, always was from afar as we grew up with her watching her on TV. But to be able to work with her and to see her heart and to feel everything that she represents, it, it's just been an honor. So mm -hmm. that's really what it's all about, you know, expanding this Jingle Jangle universe for everyone to enjoy. Uh, David Lynn, it's been an honor to be in conversation with you all. Um, you're just exceptionally talented. And thank you so much for, for the time on behalf of DC Public Library. Um, and uh, congratulations on all your great work. Be sure, DC Public Library audience, to check out Jingle Jangle, A Christmas Journey on Netflix. You can also get The Square Root of Possible, A Jingle Jangle Story, and The Invention of Jeronica's Jangle here at DC Public Library or your local bookstores. Please be sure to follow DC Public Library on social media, download the DCPL app, or go to dclibrary.org for more programming like this. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having us. Thank you, Ryan. Good night, everyone.